Okay, chicken rice and super stuff. Oh, there you got it. Okay. All right. So I'd like to welcome everybody to the College of Complexes tonight. My name is Tim. Um, I'm the kind of the host slash AP tech of this group. Um, the format of the college is consists of the following. First, we'll have a brief announcements period where Charlie will uh, uh, talk about upcoming programs. And if anybody else has any uh, um, events in the community of interest, then our speaker will speak tonight for up to about an hour. We'll then follow it by questions and answers. And then of course, after that, we'll have our infamous rebuttal period. We have to, the restaurant closes at eight, so we have to leave here by about 7.45. Out of here. With that, uh, take it away, Charlie, and we'll get started with this uh, announcements period. So when you're ready, Charlie, go ahead. All right, welcome everyone to meeting number 3,751 of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. Um, now, although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement. For our upcoming programs, we've got nine booked, nine upcoming programs on the schedule. On February the 3rd, Ken Williams from our satellite campus will give us an outline of the accomplishments of the Biden administration Jesus. and why you should vote Democratic in the upcoming presidential election. He's got a very detailed PowerPoint. On February the 10th, internationally known conspiracy theorist Jim Feltzer will bring us up to date on Sandy Hook and possibly some other alleged conspiracies or false flag operations of the U.S. government. That's on February the 10th. Give me a second. I Charlie had a wrong link on the uh, thing here. There we go. It's going to be coming right up now, Friday, February 3rd, and now February, we don't have the 11th, okay, February 19th. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay, on February the 17th, uh, Sid Cohen, one of our most senior members of the College of Complexes, been here almost since at the beginning, will be talking about society and capitalism over the over the centuries society and capitalism on february the 24th we're going to be talking about looking at uh, literature and a philosophical discussion of ethics and moral principles by professor robert lichtenberg so if you want to discuss ethics ethical decisions Situational ethics. We'll see you on February the 24th. On March the 2nd, uh, uh, March the 2nd, Tim. It's coming. It's, it's just uh, slow. It, it's coming. It, it's just uh, browser's a little slow today. Hang on. March, you said. Yes. I know. I'm, I'm coming. It's okay. There we go. On March the 2nd, Dr. Mike Gross of the Center for Pluralism will be talking about the situation in Israel and Palestine, March the 2nd. Now in March, we have two days open, March 9th and the 30th. So if you'd like to speak, contact me with a title and a description of your presentation. On March the 16th, the Libertarian Party will be here to review their slate of candidates across in Chicago and across the state of Illinois for the primary election in March. So the Libertarian Party will be here. On March the 23rd, uh, Please keep the talk, talk conversation down in the room. On March the 23rd, uh, Justin Tucker will be showing us his political illustrations from his collection that he has assembled 
on various issues. So it's always something to discuss about. A lot of these are amusing in content. So that's March the 23rd. On April the 6th, uh, Andy Anderson will be joining us with ideas and recommendations that he has researched and come across, things that we can do personally, we can do by ourselves to save the planet from climate change. We're also going to have, we're looking to book two more additional speakers to fill out the programs in April for our Earth Month, a regularly Earth Month series of programs. On April uh, the 27th, um, Enrique Perez will be talking about why Joe Biden is, he considers him to be the worst president. And he recommends that no matter who is running, that we vote Republican. So we're going to have one program for Biden and one program against him. Okay. Uh, and now in terms of announcements, the independent voters of Illinois are going to begin their endorsement sessions on Monday, January the 29th. The public is invited to attend. If you are not a member or an officer, you will not be able to vote or participate. However, the public is invited to observe the interview process that will be going on throughout the week. If you are interested in attending these endorsement sessions, please contact me. My email is on the website of the college and I will forward you the schedule uh, of, of the Zoom meetings of which you can attend. Okay, Tim, that's about it. Take it away. Okay, uh, all right. Um, is our speaker ready? Yeah, I'm back All right, I'm gonna come up. Um, all right, I forgot your name. Kathy. Okay, Kathy Powell. Right. Okay. Let's give a rousing round of applause for Kathy Powers. Yay! Uh, we'll start on it. I'll get your PowerPoint up. Okay. okay I'm just trying to let you know, it's my first PowerPoint. I'm loading pictures for four days. Okay, just give me a minute here. We'll, we'll have a, just go ahead and start talking, and I'll have the PowerPoint up in a minute. I'm here. Oh, Ronald's here. Hi. All right. My name is Kathy Powers, and I'm a uh, board member of Northside Action for Justice, a core member of the Alliance for Community Services, um, uh, a member of the uh, advisory community advisory mental health board, and I have a disability. I have, a, a, you'll see it when it comes up. I have a stand up walker, it's parked back there. And I rely on uh, public transportation because, like, the walker is extremely hard, high, and large, and like really doesn't fit in cars or anything. And so, you know, I really rely on the buses and the trains. I had to kind of give up the trains because the elevators are <laughs> That's a Chicago word, hinky. <laughs> and uh, the buses aren't anything to cheer about either, but I'm grateful they're there at all. Just keep. I, I, I'm grateful for this opportunity to let you guys know because I've been feeling lately like nobody cares. And then I thought about it, and I thought, well, really, I don't think that's true. I think nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, it's not nobody. I, some do, some don't. And I have pictures here of uh, my my uh, my daily trips out on the bus. Uh, some pictures of how the buses are. There's me with the, the walker. It's not up yet, but we'll have it. We'll have it in a second. I, okay, we're gonna have it here in a moment. All right. All right. Um, keep talking, and we'll we'll be we'll, we'll get you. We're gonna get your PowerPoint up right now. 
as soon as I uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Here we go. I'm, I'm watching. To, I'm learning too. Screen I'm share. Learning. Here we go. So, uh, okay, and then we'll go. There you go. Uh, yeah, I know from the beginning. I was experimenting with this myself last night. Okay. Um. I thought it would be easy, but it wasn't as easy as I thought. Okay, we got it, Kathy. Okay, there I am. That's outside of my, my front door. I live exactly a half a block away from the Morse Red Line Station. I can't use it because it's not accessible. It, it was rebuilt by Joe Moore, you know, probably 10 years ago. I'm not really sure about the date. And there is no accessibility built into it. I want to know how we got away with that because the, the, the ADA was in, how, how old was the ADA? 40. 40 years. So, you know, like the 40 years ago, things were supposed to be accessible. And then, well, people were dodging that because it said, well, new things have to be accessible. But only if you know, you spend so much money on the new things. If you rehab things, and, and you know, a lot of things are accessible. So for me to get to the red line, which I dearly love, it's fast. It gets me downtown when I need to get there. Uh, I take the Morse, the Devon bus from, this is Morse, to the Loyola station. And if the elevator is working at Loyola, I can get on the uh, red line and take the train out. If the Loyola station isn't working, as it often isn't, it's a strange elevator, I have to take the Devon bus to Devon, cross the street, catch the Broadway bus south, uh, and heaven knows when that bus is going to come that's either. That's it's it's one of those uh, ghost bus lines. That's, that's so uh, mostly I go to Hollywood and uh, Broadway. That's that's mainly where I go. However, sometimes the bus just doesn't come. So thank goodness I can still walk. I walk from Devon all the way down to Hollywood, and. <laughs> And by the time I get there, like I, I'm so tired, I can't do anything mostly. So it takes takes me a while to recover from that. People don't understand because there aren't any buses that go straight down Sheridan all the way down Broadway, which kind of would make sense. At the 147 bus, and that turns on Sheridan and it goes down. I've taken that bus sometimes down Sheridan. Mm -hmm. And walk back. So that's a two block walk. It's better than the Devon thing. But it, it's tough. There, there's my lovely ramp. The ramps don't always come down. The dark next one. The the uh there's reasons why sometimes a bus will be in the middle of the street, can't drop the ramp. Because they were not paying attention that I'm, I'm standing. I mean, you can't miss me. You just can't miss me. Um, sometimes the operators just don't want to drop the ramp for whatever reason. So, you know, like I end up waiting 15 minutes in the rain for the next bus. Um, sometimes the operator drops the ramp on top of the bottom of the street time. So it's 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 off. I mean, I can't use it. It's not safe. Um, I've been passed up. I've been standing at the bus waiting for the ramp to drop. Or, you know, like I said, it's very visible. And the driver and the doors were open, and the driver just closed the doors and started and left. But. Uh, many times, many times, the bus is too full for me to get on with the ramp. If anybody's on with the wheelchair, like there's two spots, there's two spots where it can be. And if somebody's on with the wheelchair, that leaves one spot. 
Well, if there are a lot of people in there, you can't do it. A lot of people with baby carriages in there, and they don't fold them up, and they take up the, the priority seating spots. So, you know, next slide. Next slide. Sometimes when I, I ride the bus, bus stops abruptly. I have flown off the seat over my, my walker. And, and I almost broke my finger there. Okay, uh, there's a crowded bus for you. I can't get on it. If the bus pulls up like that, I can't get on it. I just can't get on it. Next slide. I call these buses the the um the slide and ride buses. These are are seats that don't have fabric on them. They're kind of slope forward. So when the if the as the bus goes, anybody sitting there will be sliding and bumping into slide and ride. Not too many of those, but I'm really glad they're not. I'm going to slide and ride. There's, there's my walker in, in the priority seating. Next slide. There are, as far as I can tell, three different layouts for the buses. This, this one here seems to be the uh, the new thing, and it's just solid seats all the way down. Uh, when I get on, I have to lift like three of those up. Very, they're very, very heavy. And like the driver will say, "Well, can't you sit in your walker?" I tried it once. I did try it once. No, no, I can't because. You know, it moves. Even if it's locked, it moves. The locks are pinky too. Um, that's the usual seating. Here's a priority seating. And I just had to lift up two seats and sit down if people let me. Um, now that I've seen, it's, it's the same seating thing, but they'll have three seats here that I have to lift. And that's pretty heavy. Not too many of those either. Next slide. These are on the pace buses. <laughs> and, you know, I want to know what giants can reach them. I, and this is pace. You know, pace is supposed to be the accessible one. Like, I don't know. Next slide. <laughs> Okay. These are some of the injuries I've gotten from falling on the bus, being knocked around. My knees, my legs, my eyes. This is over a period of years. It didn't all happen at one time. And that next slide. A bit more. So, so I, you know, I tell I tell CTA that this happened. And they say, well, do you want to put in a claim? You know, reach out to this person, put in a claim. Well, what if I go to claim for bruises? It, you know, there's that's, 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 just suffer, girl, just suffer, that's, that's, I think. Next slide. Okay. That's my buck, by the way, at the end. That was that was rough. Um that's, that's, the buses aren't maintained well. Uh, they they don't they don't check them, I think. I don't know. Sorry about that. I just wanted to sound for you. Okay. It's just speak normal and show you all something. Okay. Um, today, on my way here, I took the Addison bus and the indoor display light working on in the front. And I count on those. I count on those. I can tell the time on it. I can tell where I am if I'm in an area where I don't know, such as the next stop is. And when they don't work, I'm, I, you know, I don't. I have to get my phone out and look and see what's going on. Uh, sometimes the ramps don't come down or they stick. And the, so sometimes the driver will come out and physically pick up a loop and pull it open. But nine times out of 10, they won't do that. 
that. I think they're supposed to, but uh, I don't know. So next slide. There's uh, display lights that aren't working in the front of the bus. Next one. Next one. Sometimes you have to report things more than once. Uh, there was a, a divan bus that the seats wouldn't come up on the one side. It, it, I, it was just locked down. And I had, actually, I had reported four times. I don't know if they fixed it or I just never got on that bus again. And the inside, the inside display thing is, is rough. The audio, the audio, when it tells you the, the stops that are coming up, sometimes it gets out of sync <laughs> and it tells you the wrong information. I'm, I'm pretty good because they take these all the time. I know where I am, but I don't always know where I am. Next slide. These things are important. People don't get it. Attitudes. Oh my, attitudes. <laughs> <laughs> if you need the ramp, you ask for the ramp to be dropped. And we've got eye roller operators. Hello. How, you know, I don't know. Today, when I got in the bus, I said to the driver, I said, thanks for not rolling your eyes. And he laughed. Um, okay, next slide. Uh, yeah, next slide. This, this is the priority seating here. This lady had a, uh, a car. These things of rice on it. I don't know why the operator let her on like that. Yeah, I don't know. But it just pissed me off a lot. Next slide. This is the top of the bus shelter in front of where I live. It's been, uh, after a storm, it got like kind of cut. And there's sharp pieces, that's plastic, and sharp pieces up there. And that for over six months now, I've been reporting it to the older woman to 311 because if one of those sharp pieces falls on somebody, it's going to be some some kind of you know injury. And I, I don't know. I think they wait for lawsuits before they fix anything. I don't know. I'm ba I'm back on it again. After six months, I start again. Next slide. This this is the bus stop at Morse and Glenwood. This has finally been fixed. It took me two and a half years to get it fixed. There's a sewer under there and it's sinking. So eventually there was a hole, I mean a big hole. And it's right at the bus stop. And if, if you don't, if you have a new bus driver who doesn't know what's there, they pull up in front of it. So then I have to ask them to move up so they can drop the ramp. Okay, next slide. Now it's sinking again. That's how, it, that's how it started before. And I can still run over it. But last year, when it started like that, grass grew in the hole. So you couldn't even see that there was a hole. And let me tell you, I, I, I read so we hell about that. Eventually, when Lori, one of Lori Lightfoot's meet and greet things with the Department of Sanitation, and I told them they were, like, oh yeah, they didn't get fixed right away either. Next slide. This is this is the bus at Hollywood and Broadway. Um, there is not there is a uh, a, a cement with flowers in it or something. And there's not enough room for the ramp to be dropped and the wheelchair to get off. I, I tried with uh, the old alderman about it. All they have to do is just try to remove some of that cement and be great. But you, you have the side, you have the, uh, the fire hydrant, and then you have the cross, crosswalk. <laughs> A lot of times I get off at the crosswalk. If the bus drivers know if they stop pretty far from the street, they can drop the ramp. But then there's a problem with turning. If, if I had a wheelchair, I'd really be in trouble because sometimes I have to lift the walker over, over the lip of the ramp as it comes down. Next slide. 
Can we please keep it quiet in the restaurant? Charlie, you can keep, keep, no. keep talking. Can you hear me? Yes, they can hear you. Okay. Um, have them escalate. Keep quiet in the I restaurant. just said rely on escalate. All right. Charlie, shut up. Hey. <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> one full. Yeah. yeah, you Before watch I, it, pal. We can't hear it. Before and you're not taking control of the damn thing. You bark at me. Escalators. And the escalators go out for months at a time. Months at a time. Uh, next slide. There, there's an escalator that's just not working. And it's the pins crawling up it. Uh, next slide. I think I posted this on Facebook. I'm not sure. Uh, we were on the Broadway bus going south, and it was crowded. It's very crowded in there. And a lady with a walker, very very old, elderly lady, had a walker, and she couldn't get on. And she had a flipping fit, and she pulled her walker in front of the bus and said, if I can't get on, you're not moving. So they had to call the police. I loved it. I loved it. I'm sitting there. I was not I was glad I was on, but I thought, you know, I, I've thought of things like this a lot. And it took, you know, it took about 20, 25 minutes for the police to come and straighten it out. And I just want to point out that in that whole 20 minutes, there wasn't another Broadway bus that came either. That's a Broadway bus. Next slide. More escalator stuff. The escalator at Granville was out from last April to uh, right before Christmas. That was my Christmas present, although I don't use it anymore. And it broke down like within a month. They, I don't know what the deal was. So next slide. You know, when they're out, they're out for a long time usually. They say, oh, wow, well, you know, the parts for escalators are, you know, hard to get and stuff. And, you would think that a public transportation company would have some parts on hand. I don't know. I don't understand. Next slide. This is me on Facebook. When I get notifications that an elevator is out, I post it. And I post it with the background. I call this the Hershey Squirts. It's cho chocolate pieces. But I call it the Hershey Squirts. And I do this because I have friends who are coming on the elevator and they might not, they might be in transit. They might not get the, the uh, notifications on their phone. So I just want to let people know where the elevators are working. My Facebook page is full of them. Next slide. This is a, a, a typical, uh, Notification when you get to an elevator place, uh, they'll say what elevators aren't working. It's not always accurate. It's not always, uh, oh, escalators. They don't report anything about escalators. You know, I don't understand that. I just don't understand that. Some people cannot climb stairs. They can ambulate to the station, but they can't climb stairs. And I, you know, I think that's a, a big problem. I'm going to work on that one too. Next slide. These are brand new doors to get in and out of the train station for the handicap. And the reason they're tall, tall things now. And this is so people can't lean over and push the button and get in without pain. They put these things in. I, it had to be the lowest bidder because they didn't work and they didn't work and the, the people had to let you in the gate. If, if they were kind, they would just let you in the gate. They'd see you and they just let you in. But at Loyola, they I don't know what their problem is, but that woman makes you walk over to a turnstile, flat, flat your bus pass, and then come back and she'll let you in. I think that to be a free ride. 
This was on my way home from something downtown. And it was like eight o'clock at night and I was a little bit nervous because I'm all by myself. And this is at Jackson. And I went down the elevator to Jackson and couldn't get in. I couldn't get in. So there was a guy fixing one of the turnstile things. I said, can you, can you help me? Can you get me in? And he said, oh, I don't do that. I, you know, I'm just here to fix this. Ask somebody in the office. Well, there was nobody in the office. I don't understand why downtown there isn't somebody in the office all the time. There's so much nonsense going on downtown. So I, I said, oh, okay, well, I guess. And I'm thinking to myself, well, now, Jackson, I'm going to have to walk up to Washington to get an elevator. That's the only, my only recourse to get in the red line with an elevator or take a bus at 8 o'clock at night downtown. I don't think so. Next slide. Next slide. So then there's a, um, all kinds of closures, there's street closures, elevator. Next slide. Sorry about this. That's all right. Yeah, good. Um, they do things like this now. That they'll they'll not have stops at certain stations in a in a row. You know they're doing something, and they're not providing shuttle buses anymore. So I want to know about that too. Next slide. Elevator out of Wilson. Wilson's a big stop. Next slide. This says, this is an elevator in downtown. It says, access two blocks away. Next slide. This is, this is uh, the block. My house is the one shuffled out. I couldn't get to the bus stop. I had to cancel two groups. Because I couldn't get I couldn't get this box up. Next slide. Sidewalks. This uh, Edgewater is loaded with sidewalks like this. I've been in contact with the Alders office. I go to the Alders office because if you if I as a, a lonely person report things to three one one, I'm a lonely person and it gets ignored. So they like. Confirm that you sent something in, and that's about it. So I took on the all the people to send it in because sometimes you sometimes you get action, sometimes you don't, but sometimes you do. It depends on the alder, I think. Next slide. This this is a sidewalk in front of 5060 North Broadway. This is outside of the geriatric health center. <laughs> So I took this picture and, oh, it's really, really bad. It's worse than how it looks. Uh, 50, 50 North Broadway is where uh, Cedar Street is. And that's, that's lovely. That's just lovely. But <laughs> I don't, I don't know. So I sent, I took this picture to my doctor and I said, you know, this is really dangerous. You know, do something. North Shore. This is North Shore. So they must have some kind of club, do you think? Next slide. This is uh, uh, an alley, you know, you had, I have to cross on the street at kind of, kind of between uh, Kenmore and uh, Winthrop and Bryn Mawr. And it's totally flooded. It was like almost up to my ankles. And it always works. They're not fixing it. Again. Well, now, now that they're working on the red line, maybe it'll yeah. straighten out, I hope. Next slide. A little construction going on, and they think the sidewalk is just great. And it wasn't. I, I think sometimes the wheelchairs uh, can get over this kind of stuff better than I can with my walker. Yeah, my walker is not as sturdy or heavy and it you know, can't <coughs> go through. So next slide. I mean, this is all over everywhere. This is about, I can't remember where this was. 
but they they were doing something, and you couldn't even get through the sidewalk. There's all kinds of garbage. I'll just say garbage on the street. I don't know what they were doing. Maybe sewer work. I don't know. But uh, how do you drop a ramp in front of that? That's, that is a bus stop. Next slide. This is my personal pet peeve. There's a pedway between the red line and the blue line. And it's, it's lovely because you don't have to go outside when the weather's bad and you can you know, walk all that way. But if, if you have an assistive device, this is 69 what's Washington. Do you see, do you see where there could be a ramp and you could get in the building? It just abruptly ends. There's no warning. You have to go back a block or two and go up, go up uh, the, uh, what is it, 37 building, and get to the street, and then come out to the street and cross the street to get to 69 West Washington. It's been that way for years, is that, and I think it's wrong. Is that just because it's a revolving door? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but see on the side there, they, they, could, make ramp, they could make ramps there. They could, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, next slide. Sorry, I just didn't quite That's okay. Yeah. This is people park in the bus stops. I call the bus stops free parking because that's how people use it. This is at on uh, Clark Street, uh, near Bryn Mawr, and it, uh, this was like a whole, whole bunch of landscapers. Stuff, and they just park there and the bus can pull in. Next slide. And this is my fine, final uh, picture. This is the, the picture of the yellow line that crashed into something. <laughs> uh, it was a salt vehicle. They were both scheduled to be on the tracks. Don't know why. I do know this. I do know this. CGA was mandated to get this new signaling system. And, and, and the signaling system involves, it could be remotely, they could remotely stop trains. They could track where sorry, things sorry. are and stop trains. But uh, Dorval Carter, I guess, thought he could save a few bucks. Somehow we got around it. This was mandated to have it. And this is what happened and can happen again. So yeah, we need we need a new signaling system. And we need to get rid of Dorval Carter. And that's my presentation. Thanks for listening. We're making a, we're gonna do questions and answers first, but uh, I'm gonna take care of the feast tonight for everybody at the college. It's on me tonight, so don't worry about the three dollars. We're just gonna. I was able to, I'd be able to take care of it. So thanks a lot. And we're just oh, enjoy, the you, college on, enjoy the Very college on the thank house. You. Thank you, Jim. Uh, thank Charlie too, but we use that money for our own expenses. So, all right. Um, I'm going to let me get the screen share off and we'll get you with the normal questions and answers. All right. Who's got questions for our speaker tonight? All right. I got the first one. You know, a lot of times I don't think of, of, uh, this stuff when I'm driving about the only thing I'm concerned is like potholes, things like this. But how, I mean, have you, has CTA gotten better or do they take your concerns per se, I, anything like that at all? I don't, I don't really know. I report, I report, I, I went through my emails to see what I reported. I had 220 reports in my email that I reported to, to CTA. I do it by email, um, and it, they always acknowledge that I sent it, and then they, they apologize for my poor experience, and they're going to um, um, uh, have the manager in charge of whatever the problem was, uh, look into it. Or the rolling eyes. I report rolling eyes now, because I think we're beyond that. Are we re beyond rolling eyes? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're beyond rolling eyes. Oh. Um, yeah, um, 
And then no CTA, they're pretty nasty to their employees too. When they yell at them, they really yell at them. But I, you know, I think they could handle things better by educating people better. That's that would be my solution. But you know, so people understand, you know, what people have to go through and that it's on them to make it good. We all have to help each other, right? Okay, online, Janice, you want to unmute and ask your question? Thank you. Janice, are you there? Uh, yes. Ahead, <laughs> um, I, so, I'm just going to lower my hand. Uh, yeah, I can sympathize with uh, Kathy uh, because I've had many uh, problems and I'm not even in a wheelchair, but I did uh, have a little problem like a dozen years ago when I broke a toe and I was on crutches and, you know, I had to use elevators and, you know, special things <laughs> uh, to avoid steps and things. Uh, but anyways, Kathy, um, I, well, I taught Russian in Chicago public schools and I invited a Russian friend to my home a long time ago. And she was amazed when we went downtown to the uh, Grand Park Music Festival to see, um, you know, the indentations that were there for, you know, the ramps. Uh, she thought that was great because <laughs> they don't have that. In the, they didn't have that then in the Soviet Union. But my question to you is, um, were you born with a disability or why do you have, why are you in a wheelchair? I, I'm not in a wheelchair. I'm one of those stand up walkers. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I'm old. I fall over. I have uh, a, a lot of balance issues. And if I didn't have that walker, I couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. And I have okay. So you have balance issues. All right. Yeah. I have other things too. Back issues. Issues, you know. I've always okay, thank you. Yeah. So, go ahead. Who's got the next question? Okay, uh, let me let me uh, tag in there. I mean, you know, uh, uh, to uh, I mean, you know, with all respect to the uh, to the uh, um, uh, I believe on on the uh, call, with all due respect, I believe that was true. To ask why then for uh, any type of uh, uh, device. Uh, and the reason why I believe that it's disrespectful is because we all, even people with mental health issues, okay, uh, it's not something that you can see. And we should all have to carry a bag or, or a sign that says, this is the reason why I exist. So, you know, I'm going to uh, condemn that. But in uh, in favor of uh, what uh, Kathy has uh, presented, you know, it's interesting uh, that the uh, transit system has existed over 100 years. Okay, uh, right. My now. question would be, my question would be that as they as, as they are redoing the uh, red line uh, infrastructure, okay, why are we still having problems with elevators? Like in uh, Fullerton, uh, uh, Addison, uh, 35th Street. Okay. Uh, it's not a political will to fix them. That's not what I think. You're not that old. Political will. Follow the money. Oh. I know. All I right. Know. Uh, everybody, okay. Uh, Ernie, we'll get you, then we'll get you, Charlie. Nothing in my respect. 
because <laughs> there was a little, you know, Murray had to vote for anything that Lori liked would put out except the first budget. She got snowed and she realized that afterwards. And ever, ever since, she's been wonderful. Um, Lenny Hepperworth. She's in Edgewater. I'm in Edgewater a lot. So I I have I report things to their office. I send them pictures of the sidewalks. And they keep saying, oh yeah, we're working on this. I get a lot of lip service, no action. Um, Angela Clay is good in Uptown. Um, she hasn't been in office that long yet, so but I got oh, the Wilson elevator was out, so I, I pressed their office like three times and like you can't really get to her directly you had to go through her staff and her staff her staff wasn't like getting it and I said you know it's still down and they said well uh cta says it's up and i said gee your office is around the corner would you mind walking around the corner to see if it's working or not it wasn't working there you go um and that's me on the north side. That's that's all I deal with. <laughs> okay, um, Charlie, you got a question online? Go ahead. Charlie, go ahead. Yeah, Charlie. yeah let me get. Uh, according to CTA, uh, one hundred and three of its stations are handicapped accessible, and I had never really thought about this before. But do you have any idea? I, how many of them have both an elevator and an escalator, or one or the other? I was under the impression that those that had been renovated had both an escalator and an elevator. Now, granted, escalators aren't always easier to use, but at least if one was out, the other would be operational. Do you? Do the stations have both escalators and elevators, basically? You know, I, I, this doesn't surprise me that you haven't thought about this. I, you know, it doesn't surprise me at all. Like Janice, Janice found out when she broke her leg. You know, until something happens to you, you don't realize. And why I'm here and what I'm asking for is people to open their eyes and see what's, to see what's going on. And, you know, try and help out if you can. And don't roll your eyes. <laughs> oh. Follow up. Yeah, it takes the time reason to I'm asking is, The reason I'm asking is they claim that they have, a, according to their report that we had a link to, that they <laughs> have a program to make the stations, the 45 remaining stations, accessible. And I wanted simply to know is when they renovate a station, does it have both an escalator and an elevator? That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. And I shame Joe Moore for not doing it at Morse. And we're, it's kind of a senior community of, up on Morse and the Red Line. We have uh, seniors and gangs. <laughs> That's about all we have in the neighborhood. And, and it's like, uh, well, he, he has a lot of shame on his shoulders. So that's just one of the things. That's all I can say. Okay, who else, sir, has questions? Yeah, go, uh, go ahead. Do I have an issue with the question to see if it is? I have all the time now. Yeah. I mean, I'll wait. I can't wait to get some paper somewhere. Oh yeah, um, if I have to cross the street to catch the Broadway bus at Devon, which I often do because that elevator at Loyola, um, that has got to be one of the worst corners in the city to stand in. It. It's across the street from a high rise public housing thing. It's a wind tunnel up there. It's wicked in the winter. It's scorching in the summer. There is no shelter on that side of the street because really there isn't room for one. And the sidewalk is, and that's a lot of free parking there too. This restaurant says there's a lot of free parking. People don't, they just pull right into the bus stop and get out of the car and go get the food. And 
come back and maybe sit there and eat their food for a while. It's like, I, that was one idea that Lori Lightfoot had that I agreed with. I didn't agree with much, but she wanted to have tickets issued to cars that did that. And I said, okay, Lori. No, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And it did. Let's give people tickets for doing that. I mean, if you go one mile over the speed limit, you'll get a ticket for that. <laughs> but, but if you uh, stop up a whole bus stop, uh, which uh, to me is infinitely more harmful. So sometimes they're not only late, they don't come. Those are called ghost buses. And I've known, I just noticed a lot of travels that the buses that have the most trouble being on time are the ones that go downtown. Things that go down downtown, so like the Broadway bus does. The Devon bus runs pretty well because it doesn't go downtown. Uh, just, you know, if you're planning your travel, check out to see where your bus is coming from. That might help. I hope. I hope. <laughs> this is just my just my personal opinion, but I I under, I understand the 147 bus that goes down Lake Shore Drive. So if you know, we have an action downtown and we stop the streets and stuff, that's gonna affect the bus service. And you don't get any notice that this is what's going on. They don't tell you anything. And the bus tracker, I don't know, I sat, I sat for two hours at Jarvis and Sheridan waiting for the 147 bus. I don't usually take that, and I didn't know that that, that bus was rerouted. It had been rerouted for months. I didn't know. And the bus tracker kept saying it was coming. And I had a garbage attack. <laughs> and I wanted to go to Jewel, and I had to walk all the way to the Jewel. That was that was very painful. Okay, uh, who else has a question? Charlie, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Charlie, yes. go ahead. Uh, when the pandemic hit COVID, the ridership on public transit decreased to about a third of what it used to be. And it, to date, it hasn't recovered. And we have a fare box dependent system. 50% of the budget is supposed to come out of the fare box. Has repair and alterations deteriorated since the 2020? Has it gotten worse? Or has it pretty much been consistently poor quality over the years? Or just, I mean, what I'm asking, has it gotten worse? than it was before. Um, things, I would say, things, at least in my, my experience, things are improving. They are improving, the, the, at least in my neighborhood, the buses are more on time. Uh, I went down to Inglewood, I took, took the red line and went to Inglewood and uh, I didn't have any trouble, 63rd Street, bus was running well, and I didn't have any problems getting to Inglewood. But uh, I do go all over the city, I really do. And uh, so, you know, I, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking things are better. Things are better. The ridership is improving a little bit, but they have to do something about the drug dealers on yes. the, the that trains, almost. particularly the red line. Today, uh, taking the red line, they had a guy going through the car banging and yelling and uh, three grams for 40 and, and like, and he couldn't even stand still. So, you know, that's, I just ignore it, but it scares people. It scares people. And it shouldn't be going on. You walk, you walk into the, the red line car and it roots some weed. I mean, you know. I'll wrap it up. You know, it's just like, I got to say, though, my, my fellow red line drivers, we're tough. We're a tough breed, and we get it. But not everybody is. And, I, you know, I, I, really, I like the idea of having conductors again. 
Remember the conductors who used to open the doors and close the doors? That was good because it kind of kind of kept people like they would be slamming through the cars if that was going on. I, I remember once I was on a red line and they were running a uh, a pyramid scheme, some kind of gambling thing. And I could see where they were like really ripping off people. I, I just leaned over and pressed the button and recorded it. And they yelled at me for doing that. And it, I, just, I, I just recorded it. Because <laughs> okay. I, I don't argue with people. I just don't argue with people. I know I know in my heart what to do and what I think is good. And I do it. And I, you know, no discussion about it. <laughs> I, just, I just do what I do. Okay, Janice, you got a question? Janice, you got a question? Yes. <laughs> um, I was making my dinner at the beginning of this. And um, since I'm a vegan, I was cutting up a lot of stuff. So I didn't hear. Kathy spoke um, just recently that she was on the red line. But at the beginning of the program, she said she couldn't get onto the red line. And I didn't hear why. I couldn't, I can't get on the red line, like right out in front of my door, which is very aggravating because there's a stop there, but it's not, it, it's only stairs, it's not accessible. So I have to take a bus to get to an accessible station. And let me tell you, uh, at least on the north side, there are not that many accessible stations. There's wow. Howard Street, and that elevator is always down. Howard Street, Loyola, Granville, and the next one is Wilson. That's it. Oh, so, so accessibility you. is the problem. Um, ha have you contacted uh, CTA about that? Because yes. they redo oh. those stations all the time. I'm sorry? Yeah, uh, the system is bigger than me. I, I, I've done it 220 <laughs> times at least. So, yeah, okay. I'm doing my bit. <laughs> okay, who else has a, all right, Ernie, we'll get to you. Then we'll get back to you, Charlie. Uh, my question has to do with uh, space bus. I know that handicapped people in front of our building that pull up a lot and are people in the Now, do you use that service? And if not, why not? And what about the cab? The cab deal, I forgot what it's called. Great question. Great question. I am eligible to use that service. I have a, I have a card. I have a senior ride free CTA, Metro, whatever. If I use the pay services, I had to pay $3 each way. And I don't usually have that. I was thinking to get here tonight if there was snow that I would use it for the first time. But I didn't have to, there was no snow. God has been with me tonight. And, uh, uh, but that's why I don't use it. Uh, and they make a big deal out of it, too. You have to go downtown, go up. They picked me up with my walker and everything, and it was in a cab. And the cab, the cab, everybody who takes the cab likes the cab. But like I said, it's really hard for me to fold up my walker and fit, fit in. There were three other people in the cab. Oh, boy. And then we went somewhere else, too, before we went, went down to... Uh, the PACE headquarters, the Regional Transportation Authority. So, you know, a little of this, a little of that. I I have uh, reports from my friends who take PACE religiously because, you know, they have wheelchairs and they just have to. And the, uh, it seems like most of the people who take the regular services with the van and stuff, they have issues with having to be on the on the bus by like two hours because they they you know they, they pick a bunch of people up and just go around. It doesn't seem like they even program it well, right? Oh yeah, clock knows. <laughs> Three hours. Oh my God. So what? Uh, uh, the uh, um, 
Taxis are better. People like the taxis a lot, but not everybody can take the taxi. I really can't because getting it, I, we could probably get it in there. But folding up my walker is a big deal. It's a very big deal because I have this uh, um, bag in front and that has to come off before I can fold it up. It's not that easy. And then once I fold it up, um, it's really hard to get pat down and it doesn't always lock what, right. And I, I would just rather not. If I don't have to, I would rather not. Okay, uh, Charlie, go ahead. Charlie? Yeah, uh, 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 yeah I, you, stop calling my name, please. Uh, Kathy, I was on the LaSalle Street bus one time, and I knew a guy who was really for this, but a fight broke out between some two mothers with children in strollers and the senior citizens on the bus. And they said these in the front, I don't know if people are aware of this, those seats are reserved for seniors and disabled. And do you think, basically I'm asking, do you think like my friend wanted that those strollers should not be allowed on CTA buses? Yes, I don't think they should not be allowed. I don't think that it's public transit and I think everybody should take public transit if they can. That's how we're going to get rid of the fossil fuel. But if they public transit, it would be great. But you know, no, no, no. There, there's a lot to be said about organizing and educating the operators. Some operators will help you out. Some won't help you out at all. Sometimes it almost fist fights about getting seats. Either the Broadway bus is a tough bus because it doesn't come. <laughs> the late the lady who who put a walker in front of the bus, God bless her. Uh, you know, there's there's a uh, there's issues. I th I think I think probably the best solution would be to put on more buses that aren't yeah. enough. Good idea. Yeah, but there's no money. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. From all your from all your years of being Oh, gee. I'm a lifelong Chicago and so it's been a while. I think I think probably about fifteen years ago it started with the escalator at Bryn Mawr And it expanded. Now I, I'm a journalist and I've been writing about disability issues for since the 1990s. So I, and I don't even know how I got into it. It was just like they were pushing the snow into the oh. handicapped spots at my school, at my college. And I thought, they can push it to the other side, right? They have to push it somewhere. So I wrote about it. And so they did that. And you know what happened? Faculty took the handicap spot. Oh. So I wrote about that too. And I got a state award for it. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's just, uh, yeah. My, my real question was, what was the What do you think is the reason why we don't have more money? Because the city has prioritized its spending in areas that really don't help us a whole lot. It's my feeling. I, uh, they won't spend the money. And uh, I don't know. People don't realize until something happens to them what a big deal it really is. I, I, I'm really glad that I'm not uh, shackled into my apartment. I refuse to do that, actually. I, you know, when the sidewalks are blocked with the snow, I walk in the street. I actually walk right in front of the bus that wasn't going to stop for me because I had to. Or stand out at Devon Avenue 
for God knows how long waiting for the Broadway box. I just wasn't ready to do that. I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, crappy sometimes. So in other words, you said that your actions all started with a broken escalator at Bryn Mawr. So it was a, a matter of escalation. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. Yeah, my CTA actions, I've been in other things. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of alluded to the question I forgot. Uh, snow removal, what's your attitude about the job that Chicago does for snow removal on our sidewalks in general? I, I I think they do a poor job, it's a poor job. And I really think everybody in this room needs to get to their older person and say, this has got to happen. This has got to happen. I, I sent an a, a email to my older person when I couldn't get to the bus stop. And I said, I couldn't get to the bus stop. <laughs> I will contact Streets and Sand right away. They'll get in touch with the owner of the building. He does it every year. He does a shovel, and then he has to be told. I hope he gets fined every time. I don't know. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. In regard to that, there's an ordinance going before the city council, one section letter, but um, having to do with the city instead of the business of each property owner. You have one property owner on a block that doesn't do it. You can't get a wheelchair. That's right. Everybody else does. Hey, yeah, there, there's an ordinance that's going to the city. I think it's a form of exploratory. Kind of the sole way around, but at least in fact, I'll be aware of that and talk to our all Okay. Um, Thank you for that. All right, Ellen Corley, you can go next if you want. Ellen, unmute and uh, yeah. ask a question. Okay. <laughs> right. Is yeah. Hi, yeah. Kathy. Uh, you know, I just came in late, but, uh, you know, it's good to see you. I remember you from years ago when we were trying to organize for mental health to open up the mental health facilities with Ronald Jackson down there. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's um, I like you it's with the investigative journalism method. Um, so anyhow, I just wanted to say hi and I, I just. You know, I'm here in New York uh, with this man, um, William Pepper, who is a writer, investigative writer, worked with the Martin Luther King family. But um, so it's it's interesting, you know, your investigative journalism experience. And uh, so anyhow, tell me more about what you've been doing the last few years, <laughs> maybe, and how it connects to transportation. Or... You want my PowerPoint? I'll send it to you. It's his pictures. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Ellen oh, Corley oh, at oh. Gmail. <laughs> There'll be a recording going up. I uh, finally getting next to it and getting them done. All right, uh, who's next? Uh, going so much. I'm going to try to put a little priority on the uh, people in, in the restaurant. Okay, Jonathan, uh, go ahead. Uh, I, I had a question, uh, Kathy. CTA. Charlie, uh, Jonathan's going. I can't oh, hear you. Charlie, go ahead. Go to Jonathan. Thank you for a wonderful presentation, Kathy. It was outstanding. Very clear. Uh, do you think the car uh, lobbying industry in Springfield and Washington, D.C. plays a role, a significant role, in how deprioritized public transportation has been? Oh, absolutely. They they just snow everything over. Whatever they want, they yeah. Okay, uh, is that it, Jonathan? All right, Charlie, go ahead. Yes, uh Kathy, currently the city of Chicago budgets absolutely nothing and never has contributed one dollar for the operation of CTA in any capacity. Have you ever mentioned this to the other people that you deal with? And what would they, did they give you a response? It's it, all the any, only public money comes only from two sources, the federal government and the state of Illinois. The city gives absolute zero. 
Have yeah. they ever said anything about that? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I really, I really, really, really think that uh, first of all, I think the city, the city needs to take over CTA again. They used to. They used to. It used to be like part of the government. To me, the accessibility issues are a matter of public health. And we have a fish for Department of Public Health. And we really need to step up and say, hey, you know, public health is about presenting things. That's what public health is about. And it encompasses probably everything we do and see and, you know, uh, infections, education, outreach, community gatherings. It's all public health. And uh, I, I really hope we have a new, new almost director of public health, uh, commissioner, right, commissioner? And uh, I, I really think that she needs to get a flood of information from us about what we need, because she seems amenable to working with people. So I, you know, I think it's great. <laughs> Uh, it's, up, it's on us. It's on us. Were you always involved with this type of stuff, or was it just recently when you found out that you were having some accessibility issues that uh, got you involved? Well, uh, it started. It started in the 1990s when I was in college, uh, as far as accessibility went, mm -hmm. and it it wasn't. I don't really remember what. Why I why I started it, but I remember going to every bathroom on campus, male, female, taking pictures of how people with wheelchairs couldn't get in. They had these privacy uh, uh, platforms; people couldn't get their wheelchairs around. So I went to every, and then I wrote about it. Then I wrote about it, and uh, because you know, oh, and uh, and like so the the uh, ADA. Was it, was it, they said, well, you know, you got to have an accessible bathroom. And I remember in the student, student activities building, they took out a, a toilet stall, just pulled the toilet out, put up some kind of makeshift doors. And it turns out that people with wheelchairs, some of them could not negotiate the, the toilet. <laughs> And I thought that was awful. I thought that was absolutely awful. And it had been that way for three years. I, I didn't know about it for three years. And so I wrote about it. And uh, the building people said, well, she didn't give us a chance. They're like, where were you the last three years? I, you know, I don't even answer that. It was funny too, because they knew, they knew me personally. But they didn't know I was a Kathy Powers writing your stuff. I love it. I love the anonymity. Okay. It's fun. No, I was just curious why you chose what you were choosing and why you got involved with this issue in the first place. Well, I, I have always been originally a uh, proponent for public mental health. Always. And that's kind of how, how I even got into it. Because I see the disparity of things that happen to people who have mental health symptoms, uh, mental illness symptoms. And it, it and people, first of all, a lot of people are clueless about it. I gotta be honest, they don't get it. They just don't get it. And I blame that on public health because I think children should be taught, taught about it in school. You know, it's, just, it's a matter of public health. So, you know, I've been in that mindset since, uh, let's see, well, my first breakdown was when I was 16 years old and uh, nothing was done. And I went to college in Urbana and they kicked me out because I was suicidal and they didn't want to deal with it. Uh, Champaign Urbana is a piece of work, let me tell you. You're in the middle of the cornfield and they don't have much in the way of um, help. Maybe they do now. This was, you know, 69, 70. So I, you know, I don't really know. But it, it just, 
I was I was stuck in a spot where I felt entirely alone. That nobody, nobody, nobody was helping me. Nobody, nobody believed me. Nobody, anything. And I thought this is so wrong. This is so wrong. And I must have a good, good moral compass because that that's that's how I started. Okay. Well, I I hope I didn't pry too much in the question. Oh no, I, I I'm always free to share any of this because it's educational. Educational, and that's what I'm about. Okay. Um. All right, Ernie, go ahead. You, you're a journalist, or yeah. a journalist? Yeah, I have my newspapers with me. In fact, I forgot about that. I should have brought it up. I have my newspapers with me, and I also have a, a flyer from one of my organizations. We are pushing in Springfield to uh, help out the nursing homes to actually get get the some law made so that people people in nursing homes can complain about things, can sue when they're neglected or mistreated. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, um Janice, go ahead. Janice, please go ahead. Your yeah, hands up. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Kathy, you mentioned how hard it is to take down your walker and then bring it back up again. And I'm wondering, mm -hmm. are you pleased with the walker you have? Or is it, um, uh, would it be uh, not a bad thing to get a walker that's easier to take down and put back up? Well, I, I feel, I, I call it my Cadillac walker. <laughs> and I, I feel like you do what you have to to accommodate what you need. A, a, a lower walker, an easier walker, is painful for me. I tried one once. They, uh, the nursing, the nursing center was trying to talk me into it. So I said, "Okay, I'll try it for a day." And I thought I was going to die. I had back surgery, so I can't be leaning over. But I tried. I, I always I always give it a try because if you don't give it a try, they yell at you. Well, you didn't try it. Da, da, da. But yeah, I, I won't be accused of that. That's for sure. Remind okay. me though to give you this, give you the paper and stuff. I have two articles in the paper this time. That's kind of unusual, but I, I'm glad I did it. Okay, Calvin from the UK. What's your question, dude? Yeah. Um, well, question. I got. Uh, the buses in Chicago, um, well, in, in, in England, the oh, buses that have ramps, for, for, uh, but also, they also lower down. Do the buses in Chicago lower down as well? They're like, the buses in England, they're like, they're like low riders. You know, like they, 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 they lower themselves so that when you get on and off the bus, it's about uh, curve level. They call that a kneeling bus, a kneeling bus. Do you have them there? We have kneeling buses. We have kneeling, kneeling buses with ramps. And uh, sometimes the operator will kneel them. Sometimes they'll drop the ramp. Sometimes they don't do anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just just a little anecdote with one. Uh, many years ago, before we had the uh, kneeling buses, I was getting off this bus, and there was a, a hunchback guy. And um, he was having trouble getting off the bus. And a lot of people were waiting behind him. And uh, the bus driver couldn't see what the holdup was. So he said, come on, guys, you know, hurry up, please. And the hunchback guy said, what do you think this is? An effing parachute. <laughs> I remember one time during rush hour, a bus came and it was too crowded for me to get on. But there was one right behind it, which was essentially empty. But that driver didn't look to see who was at the bus stop because I was waiting for him to pull in. And he went around the bus down the street and I had to wait 15 minutes. I don't go to Mariano's anymore at Sheridan Foster because I can't get home. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, seeing as how there's no more questions, we are now officially into our rebuttal period. Um, those who have a rebuttal, please raise your hand. Then we got three here online. Uh, just go ahead and uh, raise your hands and I'll apportion that time out accordingly. <coughs> we'll go with about 
about four minutes each. <coughs> um, sit down. Let's thank our speaker. That's okay. Well, 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 we'll take care of it from here. All right. All right. Now, our first rebutter, please get up there. Let me get that uh, microphone. It's, thank you very much for oh, your presentation. I'm getting that paper stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jonathan, you're all set. I'm first. I'm just getting ready. I don't uh, who wants? Uh, uh, all right, David. <laughs> and I do see you guys online. We'll uh, let a few of these guys here go first at the restaurant, and then I'll get to you. All right, David, go ahead. First of all, I'd like to thank our speaker for an excellent presentation. Secondly, I don't have to have the ramp. I do have to have the bus step lower. Yeah. And I've gotten dirty looks more than once from drivers who don't want to lower the bus. I talked to this owner with a friend of mine who is now deceased, who drove for many years to Pace South Division. He said, a lot of drivers feel that lowering the steps is a delay to service, and they don't like it. It's too fucking bad. That's, that's been the warning. Is it rolling your eyes, too, when you said lower the Yeah, number two. I also wish they would bring conductors back on the L. Um, the best way I can describe it is this. On one occasion, I was riding on the L, and... Some guys came by with, who were conducting a gambling game with the old, under which pot is the pea? Well, I just sat there and read my paper and I just ignored them and they were gone. And a while later, a woman went by with the conductor and she was complaining about she had lost money to the people conducting this gambling game. And the conductor said, look, I can and I will put those people off the train. But you were a grown woman and you knew what you were doing when you put up the money for this. And the fact that you lost your money is unfortunate, but there's nothing I can do about that. Huh. Do you think do you think the Texas are law enforcement officers? All right, our next from Charlie, I want you to uh you want to rebut next, Charlie? Go ahead. All right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Kathy for a wonderful PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I really was impressed. You put a lot of time and effort into that. And on behalf of the college, I'd like to thank you. I've got six things I will cover. One, um, CTA in the city of Chicago is funded through actions by the state of Illinois and the U.S. Congress. Again, the city of Chicago contributes absolute nothing, absolutely nothing towards the day-to-day -day operation of public transit in the city. So contacting an alderman, CTA is not likely to be responsive to an alderman since they do nothing uh, to keep the system uh, in re repair and alteration. Uh, they're okay. Number two, there's two things you got to look at. By the way, I should say that I'm Secretary of CTA Citizens Taking Action for Transit. I have been for a number of years. When you talk about the budget, there's two budgets. There's an operating budget and a capital budget. And that's what I mean. You have to look at each of these. They are there are public hearings in the fall, in October and November. Budget for the coming years are presented, and you want to review those. We have links on our website, Citizens Taking Action, and you can review how much is allocated to get the buses operating or make capital improvements to the system. That's very simple. There's a division between the two. And the funds don't transfer, uh, but that's what I mean. Take a look, and it, it's a good idea to testify at the public hearings as we do annually. Um, 
ridership has been in serious decline since the pandemic in 2020. And the all the transit systems, Metro Pace and CTA, I have been dependent upon the federal government to maintain operations. Pace had severe, drastic cuts in their service. Metro kept going, and CTA never cut in service. But if these federal funds are going to run out in a year or so, and so there may be increases in fare or cuts in service. Hopefully neither one. Number three, you did show one photo there. A lot of the people who like use bicycles want bike lanes. And these are not always a good idea because if you put in a bike lane, you eliminate bus stops. And that's what I mean. You have to watch uh, what it happens there because they'll that one, your bus stop you may have been using for years and they come along and put in a bus bike lane and that bus stop will disappear. They're not compatible features of public transit. So that's what I mean. I, I appreciate people wanting to use bicycles. However, that's not always good. The other thing, number five, is that I'm going to look into the budgets myself the transit systems offer what they call PM or performance measures. I would really like to know now, and you got me thinking, once a an elevator or an escalator goes in disrepair, how long does it take to get it operational again? If it's only a matter of a few days, that's seemingly acceptable. Oh, it should never go under. There should be preventive maintenance. However, I really would like to know, and I will inquire among CTA, if, a, if an elevator and escalator goes out of operation, how long do, can we expect it to be that in that condition and when it won't be operational again? I think it's incumbent upon us to know about what that is. Now, the last of all, I've heard this thing about bringing back conductors before. Conductors are not security personnel. They are not to equipped to be policing, engaging in policing activities. That could be very hazardous. They are civilian employees of public transit. And they're not going to go around arresting people or getting rid of getting them off trains or what have you. As a matter of fact, there could be retaliations and it could be a very dangerous situation. They could report it for security personnel conceivably. Another thing is the current equipment of CTA means if you brought in conductors, the conductor would be either only at the front of the train or the rear of the train. So it's questionable whether or not that's even an operational, that's what I mean. You've got a conductor and the driver in the front. And then, you know, it, it really, you've got to look at the equipment to ascertain. It doesn't even appear to be a conceivable thing that, that can be done at this time. All right. Thank you very much. Gave me a lot to think about. Take care. Ed, come again. All right. If there's nobody here, um, David, go ahead. I'm here. Uh, uh, I have, I have Kathy made some good points, but I think the system goes beyond just transportation. I think it's just an issue with disability rights. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of Chicago, my name is Kane McWayne, and I am on the autism spectrum. Throughout my life, I've had various trials and tribulations, but it has still been a great life that I've had as someone with autism living independently in the United States. My journey in advocacy for autism awareness began in 2022 for a class project. Since then, I've been able to raise over $1,000 for various autism organizations, speak before groups in Painesville, Ohio, Kent, Ohio, and Durham, North Carolina. 
help four families in Lake County with special needs children have the perfect Christmas and save the special needs school in Wilmington, North Carolina from closing down. If you had told me that I'd be presenting virtually the fourth college of complexes in Chicago, I would have said you're crazy. But all of these accomplishments show that people with autism can accomplish so much for themselves and are capable of living independently and helping others. But we have a long way to go for equal rights for the disabled community in this country. In Dalton, Illinois in November, a police officer hospitalized a 14-year-old male on the autism spectrum after using a taser on him while he was playing in his backyard. In October of last year, a group of thieves in Chicago's West Side District took advantage of an autistic adult and stole his dog at gunpoint. In July of last year, a 13-year-old autistic boy was shot while sleeping in his own bed in Chicago's West Van Buren Avenue. These examples of ableism, attacks, lack of police training, and overall disrespect for those on the autism spectrum, as we've seen in today's presentation, is outrageous, ridiculous, and unbelievable. It shows that while Chicago is doing a lot to fund special needs programs and organizations, there is still room for improvement. That's why I'm urging all of you, ladies and gentlemen, to work with me to propose a mandatory autism police training program to help police officers understand how to interact with those on the autism spectrum and better understand one of the common traits of those on the spectrum stemming. I also want to work with you to all to propose an increase of criminal charges for, to those who take advantage, rob, or abuse those with autism to a mandatory 25 to life sentence under a hate crime. While this sentence may be harsh, some people with autism don't understand social cues and are easily susceptible to being hurt, being misunderstood by society, which is even harsher than a life sentence. I know what it feels like to be misunderstood by people as someone with autism, as I've dealt with it my entire life. But if you guys work with me to propose these ideas, we will make the autism community more understood. To conclude, I want to share a quote by autistic philosopher Frederick Nietzsche. Freedom is the will to be responsible to ourselves. At the end of the day, we ourselves as a society are responsible for making all people, no matter the disability, race, or orientation, feel welcome in this country. With these proposals, Amber proposals Kathy has, there will be a fighting chance this happens. Thank you. Okay, Caden, we appreciate you coming in and uh, telling us about autism. Yeah. All right. Great. Who's next? Do you want to? Do you want to stay there, or do you want to go up to the podium? Well, hand him the computer mic. And, and hand him. Go ahead. Hand him the computer mic. Speak loudly so everybody here can hear you. Let me uh, get you off and get you back on the. Uh, go ahead. I 
Okay, uh, who else is next? All right, uh, chart, you want to go, Jonathan? Yeah. Go ahead. Unless somebody needs to go right now. No, you go ahead. Charlie's already rebutted. He wants to do a, a second one, but go ahead. You got You got to just, just let it go like that. That's good. I, I might be a little bit more than four. No, that's fine. We got, we got a little time, so. Yeah, uh, thank you, Kathy Powers, for one of the best talks we've ever heard on this subject. Oh, my God. My mom, Linda Barton, a uh, Rush Presbyterian St. Luke's Nursing College graduate, is a retired operating room nurse with an employment record at several highly reputable Chicago and area hospitals for over 33 years of caring for people in Illinois during her career, often in the most difficult moments of their lives and their loved ones' lives. Since 1979, She's had a disability which affects the nervous system known as multiple sclerosis. <clears throat> For over half of her nursing career, as she worked with the added anchor of multiple sclerosis, she literally exceeded some of the highest expectations a member of the nursing community, who also happened to be a member of the disability community, could be assigned to fulfill. For that and eons of additional sacrifices, she's one of the countless essential workers who we should be proud to call a member of our community. She's one of our best. Whenever she attempted to utilize transportation services, the result was either lacking in all necessary goals met or failure to even attempt to provide fundamental choices required for a community member of her highly credible character, as well as a retiree with disability accessibility needs, as more and more people are experiencing every day. She represents all of us. And I can go through the list of things that Kathy's already mentioned that my mom could echo here tonight were she able to be here tonight. The main point of my statement this evening is not to present it in the hope that these human rights will be addressed by the efforts of the legislature or by private industry for distant future generations. Transit needs now is a word that even fails to properly say it. So I'll use a different word. Uh, more urgent word, one my mom knew well at the hospitals where she and her co-workers provided essential care for their patients. Stat is the word I'll use this evening for my rebuttal. Stat. The reason I share our community's concerns for my mom's quality of services is to correct the record for all of us who need successful outcomes for our loved ones and others or ourselves today or tomorrow. To correct the record that our transit choices are not luxuries, our transit choices are not lotteries, our services choices are not rarities. These are not private entities, they serve the common good, they're ours. We demand its respect stat. Why is the decision-making process on what to prioritize in the power of financial services industry and not we, the members of the public? Why is the level of work, degree of care, capabilities of service and overall strength of the program surrendered away instead of being completely within all the minds, voices, deeds, decisions of the very engine of our community through the autonomy of we the families, we the workers, we the infrastructure architects, we the passengers, we the drivers, we the mechanics, we the road crews, we the electricians, we the engineers, we the healthcare providers, we the personal assistants, and we everyday employees, everyday folks who directly know the consequences of our system. We're at the 23rd hour. No community this wealthy, no community this educationally blessed, no community this materially well off 
No community this industrially accomplished should be begging for larger crumbs of mediocrity for something as essential to our quality of life as these public services issues. Our relationship over the many years of its existence at the very top of decision makers has been akin to that odd scene in the film, The Wizard of Oz. Public are first aware of the truth of who genuinely holds the levers and the controls of power. We meet with you, the managers, and have some of the most friendly dialogues, or I like to think of them as pacifying, run out the clock, energy waste drills, possible, and then a small amount of marginal improvement, slowly and methodically conducted, and nothing substantial changes for the human beings who most need the process to function. You, the ruling class, however, are not the one who, like in the movie, is positioned in the prime spot behind the curtain where the shining metropolis, this health, happiness, and history are forged. That status is held by the banks. Banks and the financial services industry in general assume that title. When this is the reality of the leadership that we have in the United States of America in 2024, our conclusion about how much positive outcome will result from such practice is clear. Stat is not how high the services are prioritized. Stat is not how vital quality of transit exists. The word which best describes what we know on a daily basis is, is the opposite of stat. We cannot mince words. And we will not sugarcoat it. What we're bearing witness to is stall, as in a stalling of necessary action for we, the people who built this country. This partnership is no longer one that we can tolerate. The stakes are too high to allow public transit and infrastructure that's accessible to be stalled by individuals who very rarely, if ever, need to ride a bus. Very rarely, if, or if ever, need to take a van. Very rarely, or if ever, need to take other means of public transit home on a long, rainy, or long, snowy, or a long, slushy night. Stop stalling. Stop running out the clock. If this is the best you can do, and that's all the more reason why then you're obligated to pass Medicare for all. Because at this pace, we're all going to be visiting the hospital or the clinic as a result of all our aches and pains and injuries, as Kathy has testified this evening, or disabilities, due to the out-of-control merry-go-round we are forced to board in order to live our daily lives. Do what we demand, or I'll paraphrase Henry David Thoreau here, uh, in the, the best interest of our country and our uh, people's values, resign. I rely, I relay these sentiments with no joy at all. Increasingly, our conclusion is that your failure of leadership is part of a much larger collapsing from within in our country, which stems from a complete lack of understanding of how best to form a more perfect union and a complete lack of understanding of how to form a more civilized earth. The new way must be of, by, and for us by people like those who organize and work today and every day for solutions that might work for all. Because as my friend Clark famously often says, a solution that doesn't work is no solution at all. Yeah. Solutions from people like Linda Barton, stack. Thank you, Kathy Powers, one of the best talks we've ever had. Woo. All right, uh, uh, Ernie, you're gonna go. Okay, Ernie, Charlie's in the wings, but he's did one already. We'll get you up there, then we'll get Ernie, and then we'll let you All right, I'll get, okay, after Ernie, I'll let you go. Uh... Yeah, by way of introduction, uh, I have been using the CTA system on a regular basis uh, for most of my transportation for decades. I would say how many, but for a long time. So I do have some uh, experience and some memory. Now, basically, I don't want to be contrary in here. We do have a lot of problems that we have to deal with, but and, and have not yet been dealt with. But when I think back to the way things were now, things are so much better now. Uh, the quality of the vehicles are better. Uh, more generally speaking, I think more runs. That that may not be true. Actually, in the old days, they used to run trains even more often. But still, we have escalators in in more than a two-thirds of the station escalators and elevators. And best of all, as far as I'm concerned, we have the system now. 
where we can look either on our phones or they'll have monitors sometimes at the stations telling us when the next bus or the next train is coming. And that is so helpful in, in making a decision when to go out, stand in the cold or wait inside for a few more minutes. So yeah, things have gotten a lot better. There's still room for improvement. Don't, don't deny that. And really enjoyed your talk. You really, you really had a lot of, uh, in, in addition to documented evidence, photographic evidence uh, of what you were talking about. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Charlie, Charlie, you're next. Go ahead. You got, I know it's your second rebuttal, but you got, got some time. Yeah, it's only seven o'clock. Just wanted to add two things I forgot. Number one, a few years ago, there was a lot of friction about the ramps on buses not operating, which causes problems. Obviously, you wait for a bus and it comes and, you, and the ramp won't work. We raised the issue, citizens taking action raised the issue with the mechanical department at CTA. And quite frankly, the mechanical guy said, yes, we're fully aware of that fact. Sometimes as well, those bicycle things in the front are not operational. He said, however, we try to do the best we can with the personnel we have. And I cannot keep a bus in the terminal simply because that's not operational. No, you can accept or not accept that as an answer. But he said, yeah, we're fully aware. We're trying to correct them. We'd like to have them all, of course, operational as well it should be. But, you know, they are difficult devices. And they're outside in the snow and rain and whatnot. And their complications develop. But we do the best we can. But I cannot keep a bus in the terminal. I mean, we can't punish the entire load of passengers, uh, which you may or may not accept. But... Uh, he said, we, we've got to get buses on. The, we don't have that much fleet in, in excess. Now, the other thing I should, I wanted to remark is that CTA has 145 transit elevated stations. 103 of them, as Ernie said, have been converted to handicapped accessibility. Now, there are about a half dozen project, projects, capital improvement projects underway on different lines to bring different uh, stations up to the grade. There's four projects right now, three or four, I know, on the red line that Kathy takes. But uh, the thing to keep in mind when you make demands of public officials are to renovate a CTA station to make it disabled and accessible probably costs right now somewhere 40 to $50 million each. That is a significant amount of money. The transit systems don't simply have that much money. And it's terrible that one third of the systems are not in any way accessible after all these years, but it is a big ticket item. So yes, articulate this in particular to the federal and state officials so that in their budget appropriations, they make sufficient allocations so that we have all 145 stations accessible to the public and that there be adequate funding for preventive and ongoing maintenance of equipment. That's all. Thank you. Good evening. For those of you that may not know me, uh, my name is Andrew Anderson, and my brother and I run a information service where we uh, have done some transfer books and we do one page book notes that somebody could read in five minutes because nobody has time to read books a week on subjects that are specifically blacked out and censored by the press in America. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, we've gotten some flack here uh, so, uh, when I try to list certain facts that are blacked out by the press. We won't talk about some of those tonight, but there are people that attack me verbally because I'm slandering some poor government agency or something. Uh, I don't know if anyone here was here four years ago, 2019, like I was giving a speech on the top 10 censored stories of 2019 with the censored news book comes out of Sonoma State every year. A lady halfway through, a lady held up her hand and said, Andy, if what you're telling us is true, that would presuppose some of our politicians have been lying to us. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Trump had just passed his 15,000 bald face whopper. Trump alone, steady lies. And this woman can't believe that we have politicians that would lie to us. Now that's a triumph of our media, that you know, advertising works. And if, uh, if you can present like Fox News is famous for presenting things that are false and making people believe that that's reality. This is what we got, it's got steadily worse in the last 20 years. There's a website I'd like everybody to know. It's called Want to Know Info, W-A-N-T-K-N-O-W, Want to, Want to Know dot info. And they publish one page, two page, 10 page summaries of verifiable news from credible sources on things that the mainstream press doesn't cover or is intentionally blacking out. One of the, I think in America, one of the reasons we have a problem with services uh, that various services that segment of the public needs is that we, we have a for-profit system you know, uh, so in America, there's the idea that if you can't make a profit off of it, it's not worth it in putting any money into it. Since 2010, things have changed in America radically since 2010. Does everybody know what happened in 2010 with the Supreme Court ruling? Well, in 2010, the Supreme Court ruled that it's okay now to own and operate for billionaires. It's okay to own and operate your own private stable of intellectual prostitutes masquerading as civil servants, elected officials, public officials, and Supreme Court justices. So um, um, politicians do what uh, their billionaire mm -hmm. pimps want them to do. It's like uh, one side of the Congress is a giant intellectual whorehouse. I think you guys know what side that is. If you have ethics, morals, and conscience, they want to weed you out. And if you have no ethics, morals, and conscience, they say, come on down. We got a job for you in our party. When you when you provide services to nonprofit people who need them, you are cutting into the pool of money that could be shoveled into billionaire bank accounts. That's the philosophy in America. Shovel money to billionaires. I was raised, maybe many of you were raised too, understanding our parents said, actions speak louder than words. Forget the rhetoric. What are the actions telling you? What are they telling you by your actions? Well, a few hundred billionaires in this country and some mega millionaires that own and run things are saying, the message is, well, I'm sorry your child is dying because you can't afford the medicine, but I need my billions. I'm sorry there's so many people that lack public transportation. We should have three times as many buses running as well. We have. Because that would cost money. Charlie had said it might be 40 or $50 million to renovate a subway or you know, assist one, one terminal. Well, 40 or $50 million compared to uh, a billionaire that has, say, 30 billion in the bank, that 40 or 50 million is like a gnat on an elephant's ass. But the billionaire says, one of the Wall Street heirs once was asked, 
how much money do you need for your family to be secure? He said, well, my wife, I got two kids to put through college. My wife needs, uh, likes to shop. He said, my family is nowhere near secure yet because I only got 22 billion in the bank. <laughs> I need another 40 or 50 billion and then we'll be secure for life. See, that's not, that's not greed as such. That's a mental illness. Yes, it is. That's a mental illness. Yes, name it. And this is what the Want to Know Info site talks about. There's a whole section on there on military corruption, a whole section on media corruption. And they say the first step towards solving any problem, it's universal advice to seventh graders, you have to correctly identify the problem and name it. You can't solve a problem if you're pretending that it doesn't exist or, or there's no problem. You know, it's like the old saying, you know, that old joke. Well, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how would you like to play? <laughs> well, other than that, Mrs. Kennedy, how was your trip to Dallas? <laughs> and I'm going to have an article cut out and framed. I'll just think I'll put it in a frame on the wall so I never lose it. Common Greens reported three days ago. That's another website. I've got some cards of these websites on if anybody wants one. Mm -hmm. CommonGreens.org is Bill Moyer's favorite site. They did, uh, one of the, the head story, uh, the lead story, and I think it was Wednesday, is a pastor in Ohio got arrested and prosecuted for opening his church to people that were freezing to death outside. And the, the, the message for the police is, this is Ohio. Where where do you think you are? There, you know, you, this is you're running a church. We don't we don't abide by the principles of Jesus taught. We don't help the poor and the sick and the disabled. We're in it for the money. We we can't have you running around helping people that need help. I mean, this is how America has gone downhill with this. Many many books have been published how Trump and his administration gave people the red light to just increase the meanness toward people that are less fortunate. We did, the country wasn't always like this, but we're trying to recover. There's a lot of good, a lot of good things are going on, people helping people, the press doesn't cover it. You'll find it on that, that uh, want to know info. They, um, they have inspirational stories all over that site. They said, if this is too depressing or something, here, log on, look at this article of some teenagers doing something good. It's the most inspirational website that I know of anywhere on the internet. I mean, it's just, in the, they, are, they have over 12,000 articles listed. It's just mind boggling. So to wrap it up, Nelson Mandela said something, it, it always looks impossible to do something until it's done. People have to keep moving forward. And, and another one, I, uh, somebody, I was looking at Tate's quote today, he said, if you're going through hell, keep moving. <laughs> is that a great quote? Albert Einstein said, the human race is in a race between education and extinction, and I'm not sure which side is winning. Mm. And there we are. We're headed. We're headed right toward a preface. A bunch of rich billionaire psychopaths want to take over the country. A bunch of criminals want to just take over and change our country in uh, November fifth of this year. It's not going to be an election <coughs> between two parties. It's going to be a contest between decent people trying to save democracy and a bunch of criminals that want to turn our country into a dictatorship. Basically, I mean, if, if we let them get away with it, then there won't be any more. They, the 22nd, I'll listen. They want to get rid of the EPA, let the polluters pollute everywhere. They want to get rid of Social Security. So, if somebody needs uh, special medicine or anything else, well, tough, just let them die. They want to increase the death toll rapidly among all what they call the useless eaters. The people on social security, anybody that's not making money for the billionaires, just weed them out, let them die. That's there. You can look, look it up. It's called Agenda 25. The Republicans have already published the game plan of all the things they want to accomplish. They, they, they prepared all these bills so that the president.
president can sign them in one day, and what one or two days in office before, I and mean, there won't be any way to impeach him because you've got six intellectual prostitutes masquerading as judges on the Supreme Court. That's what those people are, and you need to call them out. Clarence, well, Clarence Thomas is in a class by himself, but uh, this is where we are. But the other, the other side of it is. We don't need to fight over foreign oil. Foreign oil. There's plenty of money. What we were talking about, rebuilding subway lines, uh, insulating houses, getting electric buses out. There's plenty of money to do that. But that money is currently residing in a couple hundred billionaires uh, accounts with uh, like 20 or trillion, 23, 20 or 30 trillion dollars, trillion dollars. The money is there. But we've been shoveling the money into billionaires' accounts for the last 30 years. Yes? Doesn't the government print the money? Well, the Federal Reserve and the government prints money, yeah. But we have a monetary system that is currently shoveling that money into bank accounts are risky. That's the point. And things can get better. If, if everybody understands what's going on, and like Kat, don't remain quiet. Speak up. Speak up. Make yourself heard. You know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, as they say. Do you have a comment? But don't build this eggshell is a token. And if you have the budget, it's a token. Yeah. Uh, the mainstream media is feeding us the line here that Israel is defending itself. Uh, Israel is defending itself the same way that America defended itself by slaughtering hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese in the jungles of Vietnam to take over their resources. When the kill ratio is a thousand to one, that's not a war. That's a one-sided slaughter. It, it's pic picture a heavyweight uh, fighting a uh, boxing match between Hulk Hogan and Taylor Swift. Whatever that contest would be, that's not a fair fight. Yeah, Taylor Swift would win. <laughs> a little humor there. So what's going on in Gaza, and the, the, the Israeli officials have said that, they just, they sent a message to the people of Gaza. You can stay here and die, or you can get out of the country. That's not being reported by the mainstream media. It's all over other websites. What's absolutely happening is they want to kill as many people, the Palestinians, as they can before the rest leave the country. They, they just want to, uh, Netanyahu, wherever he goes, he holds up a map of Israel. There's no Gaza or West Bank. It's all green now. It's all Israel. It's, it's his vision of what it's going to look like after they just eliminated the Palestinians. You might have to kill a couple million to get the rest to leave, but they're prepared to do it. And they're, they're on, on track to do that. That's what's going on. And if anybody tells you different, it's mainstream propaganda. But you can find this stuff by uh, logging on to the you know, info site for one. But the uh, two sites that publish the best of the best on what's happening in Israel is one called Global Research, globalresearch.ca. It's from Canada. And there's another one called uh, Dissident Voice. I have some business cards with those websites on it for anybody who wants to So okay. let me know. And, uh, All right. Any questions about what I just said before I leave? Can I clarify anything for you? All right. I think Charlie wants to go next. No, no. I. Just, it's not talking about CTA. All right. I'm going to go up real quick. I'm not making public transportation free. Yeah. That would cut into the billion. I, uh, I know. All I want to say is uh, thank you for every tonight. And I do appreciate the, uh, I've learned a few things about the disabled community tonight from you. Um, my kind of shocking introduction to it all was when I had to go with my mother about a year and a half ago when my father passed. And she's now getting dementia, and I have to you know, do this. When we take her somewhere, now I have to make sure that I get to the door and you know all that good stuff to make sure it's in the driveways cleared and everything else. And I'll tell you, it's
it's something that I used to take for granted, you know, being able to walk and do nothing like that. You know, having to take care of somebody for the first time in 30 years that, and not just me, but, you know, yeah, I take care of other people, help out other friends, things like that. But it's, it's kind of, tends to be a little bit uh, vexing sometimes. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure that there's a lot of contemporaries of mine now having to take care of other elderly parents and other people coming into this stuff. And if you start, and unless you go actually go through it, it's hard to appreciate sometimes that stuff, you know. Um, my main source of transportation is my car. Um, mine just recently got paid off, and three days later, the engine blew. Thank God my mother had another one that I could borrow for off, and I get another one for off. Um, all I'm going to say is this thank you all for coming. And one of the best things I like about this crowd is you tend to see the good in others and what their talents are. And I hope to be and work like that myself because I know that a group of you, everybody in you could probably run a corporation like any other board of directors could. You know, um, there was a lot of collective wisdom with, with anybody. Um, anyway, Thank you very much. Let's let our speaker get in a last word and we'll uh, be on our way. So, oh, I'm sorry. If you want to say something again, go ahead and I'll get the camera on you. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get you right up after him, okay? Uh, let, me get the, let me get the camera on you and we'll get you. Go ahead. All right, sir, go ahead.
Okay, our speaker. Okay, let's uh, get our speaker back up. Thank you for coming tonight. All right, uh, you get our last word, and then I'll let you adjourn us when you're done. We've got about 15 minutes left, so we can, you know we've got. I'm quick. I'm quick. Well, that's what you what you got to do. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for everybody tonight, and uh, let's uh. Go ahead with your final wrap ups. Everybody, remember accessibility is public health. Be aware, help if you can, and don't take any crap from people. Don't be rolling your eyes anymore because we're beyond that. We're, this room, we're all beyond that. Don't roll your eyes. Public transportation should be free. And I, I hope we're for it. Hope you do too. That's it. Okay. Uh, on behalf of the College of Complexes, we'd like to present this book, When We Fight, We Win. Thank you so much for being here. We look forward to your next talk and your return meeting. All right, Jonathan, you're, since you're up there, you're going to adjourn us tonight. We are adjourned. Thank you, Kathy Powers. All right. Go peace, serve justice. With that, Thanks, we'll say goodbye to everybody.